What up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I'm back with Sir Love from Phase 6. I know you guys remember him from that first video we did, and there were questions that didn't have the opportunity to get answered, didn't want the video to be too long, but we're going to jump right into some more. This one is from DeAndre Richardson. Yes, we haven't forgot about you, sir. What exactly is a 360 deal? A lot of people don't understand that, so... Break it down for us, please, sir. Okay, 360 deal is basically the record label becoming your manager, in short. Because mm. a manager has always had a 360 deal with an artist. What a 360 deal stipulates is that the record label will be able to make money off of everything that you do. That means if you do endorsements, sponsorships, anything outside of just selling records, when you go on tour, when you sell merchandise, anything that comes into your coppers, the record label will get a piece of. Um, and then you get to negotiate that percentage. Well, a lot of people don't know when you think 360 is that you actually negotiate that percentage. It might be 10%. Um, which is not, you know, as big of a deal as someone right. giving up 30, 40%. Right. So, you know, 360 deals, in my personal opinion, contrary to popular belief, they're not necessarily bad deals. What record labels have also done is they've turned around and given artists a larger percentage of the record sales. In the past, yeah. artists would get maybe, you know, it was a big deal when Janet Jackson got a dollar per album. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, <laughs> artists, that's nothing. Now, artists, the artists are able to make good money off of each uh, sale. Was that exciting? Yeah. Okay. I'm, 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 I was watching it. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching to make yeah, sure I, he was gonna be good. <laughs> it was on you. Was, I love what it was on you. Nah, it, was it wasn't on you. Yeah. Oh, but he kept looking. Yeah. He kept looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh shit. <laughs> 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 no, I was making sure it didn't. If it okay. got too close, I was gonna have to stop. Have to stop. But <laughs> I didn't want to stop the flow, so I was like, you know. <laughs> I don't even know if I got it because ain't nothing on my hand. Nah, you hit it. It fell through. Uh, it fell down in there. How you missed that? Huh? It was hanging just right there for you. I Yo, yo. Pop. Yo, yo. <laughs> All right, my bad. There was a spider that kind of took over the set for a second. <laughs> but back to what Sir was saying, he was you, know, you were kind of explaining... Oh, uh, how the 360 deals got a bad rep or why you think of them differently? Yeah, so 360 deals, uh, they have a really bad rep right now at this time. And that really came from artists uh, at one point in time, as everyone knows, they're pretty much aware of. It's common knowledge at this point that record labels were taking advantage and janking around a lot of artists. And so when it got to the point that, you know, record labels started to lose sales after the whole national debacle and things of that <laughs> nature, artists began to, you know, they got hurt. We're looking like, huh. Oh, it's your turn now. It's your turn to go. It's your turn to go through what we went through. And then when labels responded by saying, "Well, since we're hurting, we want a piece of what you have," artists got really offended, and that's how the 360 really got a bad name. Before an artist that's starting off for the first time, you gotta understand that you don't have that baggage. You don't have that history of all those issues. The truth is, if you had a manager and the manager wanted 20%, you're gonna give up the 20% to the manager who's there to help your career. The label is like another manager, except for their manager and an investor. So yeah. they're going to come in and, and have an influx of cash, which your manager most likely will not have. And they may toss you 200000 300000 If you're really big, a million, however much, they're going to advance you this money to, to push your career. And then they're going to want X amount of percentage out of it for return, just like a standard uh, investment deal. They're going to want some ownership and equity. The thing that you want to watch out for with a 360 deal is the same thing that you look out for for any deal, right? Which is... Uh, how, what are you going to own? Who owns the songs? Who owns the publishing? How, how does ownership work in the long term? Yep. You know, how fast, like, you know, at what price points do I have to pay this money back? Uh, what percentages are you going to take from my revenue to pay this money back? That's a standard record deal conversation. It doesn't have anything to do with a 360 right. or not. Yep. So make sure they're not taking too much of a percentage and also remember that you can negotiate. A lot of artists don't think about that standpoint. Um, not only can you uh, renegotiate, but even after the end of a contract term, but uh, Sir was just talking about how every album you were saying, after yeah. every project, you could renegotiate. Yeah, after every project, you gotta understand that you can renegotiate, okay? There's no day, there's no record deal that you can't get out of. You can get the right attorneys, you can spend the right amount of money, and you can get out of the record deal. So if you drop your project and you are largely successful, the record label is going to renegotiate right after that release to try to keep you there because you can renegotiate, leave, and go to another label and probably have another smash success. They want that money in their house, so they're going to renegotiate. You can renegotiate after every single album. Now, if your first album is horrible, doesn't do any sales, doesn't, doesn't gross any units or anything of that nature, may be harder to renegotiate, but you know, none of us are striving for failure. So if you are successful, renegotiation will happen at the end of every album. Right. So if you can use that machine well, 
Don't allow them to take too much of your money, but use them as a launching pad to get to a certain level of success and visibility. And then when you have that opportunity to renegotiate, give yourself an even better deal, a 360 deal could be the deal for you. Yeah, and additionally, you gotta remember that you're going to get access to the resources. The problem with a lot of artists that, take, that are taking these deals is they don't have a strong enough business team. They're not going to the label as a business, so they don't necessarily know how to use the label. Right. The label is a tool. The label, you know, we kind of have this facade that the label is going to magically make people famous, you know, and that facade has broken down and deteriorated over the years because the label has failed to magically make artists famous and make artists rich, but really they are just a tool. So yeah. you have access, now you have access to, to Grammy opportunities. Now you have access to, you know, uh, all the biggest television shows. Now you have access to all the biggest booking agencies. Now you have access to the biggest publishers. Now you have access to the biggest touring companies. Like now you have access. And if your team has been operating on a small level, doing those exact same things on a small level, when you move to the record label standpoint, you will already know what to do. You'll just be doing it at a higher scale. Right, so, and you guys don't hear me talk too much about the record label and how you can use record labels because I am so pro-independent in some of the language and just things that I preach to you guys, but I do want you to understand that the record label is not something that you should cut out. Um, it's something that could be an option depending on the situation you're working on, mm -hmm. right? Uh, independent, you could be an independent throughout the, the test of time and just be maybe where the route that Chance the Rapper is probably going to go. I don't think he's ever going to really end up in a super traditional situation, but you could be somebody that starts off with a record label, then becomes independent. Or you could be independent, record label, independent. Whatever works out for you, but that core thing that Sir said that you have to hold on to is make sure you have your team right. So whichever situation that you're navigating, mm -hmm. you're able to make the most out of that situation and maximize the returns. Um, so once again, guys, that's a real great session with Sir Love. Got to have this guy back as much as possible, um, but you really could just go to his page. So don't ask me too much to bring him back <laughs> because he has so much and so many things he has out there for you. Great resources already. Um, this time, is there anything you want them to keep in mind? Uh, yeah, definitely check me out. www.phasevi.com on the website. Go and, and subscribe to the channel. Um, check out all the information that I have for you. Uh, I talk about a lot of these different talk topics. I have a whole video, two videos on major versus independent, kind of giving you pros you and go. cons of doing the same thing. And, and I would end it by saying I do agree uh, with you. Um, and you did a great video on Chance the Rapper um, that right. I love. And I'll tell you this, a key thought process uh, before you decide to go major independent, I think about 360 deals, is investment and understanding the money that you had. Chance the Rapper, um, to my understanding, he had some type of financial benefactor up front that was able to front a lot of those costs. And so if you have that, the record label is basically a bank. And if you don't need a bank to get started, yeah, then you exactly. can... You can take his great advice on how to market yourself and you can get out there and start winning in this space and you may not have to take that deal. However, for those that are, are hustling and making things happen, putting the pieces together and you don't have the funding, it may be an option to go see. For so. sure. So once again, that's another session. Follow phase six and then brand man Sean, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.